M26 prime movers transport the tube and base for the 914 millimeter mortar, Little David. The quest for immortality has always been a sweet fantasy. Around 850 AD, during the Tang Dynasty, an unknown alchemist combined saltpeter, charcoal, and sulfur to find an elixir of life that would make the user immortal. To his surprise, this mixture had no life extension properties, but when exposed to an open flame, it exploded with a flash and a bang. It didn't take long for us to modify a scientific adventure that started with such good intentions into a tool that we would use to destroy each other. Many Western history books over the years have stated that the Chinese used this discovery only for fireworks. Well, they couldn't have been more wrong. Song Dynasty military forces as early as 904 AD used gunpowder devices, like hollow bamboo tubes that fired rockets, against their primary enemy, the Mongols. These became the first artillery pieces. The genie was now out of the bottle, and the magnitude of what would come would be beyond the imaginations of these gunpowder pioneers. Let's check some of the giant artillery pieces ever made and see why size really matter. Meet Little David. During World War II, it was developed by the U.S. Army as a weapon capable of annihilating coastal and heavily fortified defenses. Don't let the name deceive you. The mortar was able to be transported as a two-piece mobile unit, consisting of the 80,000-pound barrel and the 93,000-pound base, transported by two modified M26A1 tank tractors. In addition to the two main loads, the Little David unit also included a bulldozer and crane with a bucket to dig the emplacement for the mortar's base. It took 12 hours to make the gun ready to fire. This gun is considered, along with the British Mallet's mortar, to be the largest caliber gun ever made, as it had a 36-inch caliber mortar and could fire 3,650-pound shells through a 22-foot muzzle at a distance of 6 miles. If we measure gun size by caliber, the 20-foot-long, 39-ton Russian Tsar cannon is certainly worth mentioning. Tsar cannon, which weighs 40 tons, was cast in bronze in 1586. Its 35-inch bore was capable of firing approximately 1,800 pounds of stone grape shot, hence the nickname Russian Shotgun. Napoleon's love for Josephine is famous. Well, he also seemed to love this gun as he wanted to take it back to France when he captured Moscow in 1812. When talking about big guns, you'll notice that Germans have a great track record in this area. This is one such example of their love for giant artillery pieces. The Paris gun was a German long-range siege gun that was used to bombard Paris during World War I. These models were the largest pieces of artillery used during the war in terms of barrel length, if not caliber, and are considered super guns. This gun had a 111.5 feet, 34 meter long barrel. The Paris gun could fire a 234 pound shell at a range of 81 miles. It was crewed by 80 people, and its projectile was the first human-made object to reach the stratosphere. Check out the first episode of our Space Journey 101 series for another German superweapon making its way into space. Paris, the capital city of France. Paris has had her baptism of fire. The Germans wanted to shell France so badly. In less than two decades, they built new giants. Schwerer Gustav was built in the 1930s to attack France's Maginot Line on Germany's western border. This 155-foot-long, 1,350-ton gun had a range of about 25 miles with a 15,700-pound artillery shell. It had a 106-foot-long barrel and a crew of 250 people to serve it. The 800-millimeter Schwerer Gustav also holds the distinction of being the largest caliber gun with a rifled barrel in history. In terms of overall and projectile weight, the Schwerer Gustav and its sister gun, Dora, were the two largest artillery pieces ever built, while their 800mm rounds were the largest ever fired in combat. Well, this one is a weird story. Remember the Paris gun? Okay, someone wanted to build another one, but take it a step further. That someone was no other than Saddam Hussein. 
In March 1988, he awarded a $25 million contract to engineer and ballistics expert Gerard Bull to build two full-size Project Babylon 1,000mm superguns and one Baby Babylon 350mm prototype. The Project Babylon gun would have a 511-foot, 156 meters long barrel with a 3.2-foot, 1 meter bore. The gun's recoil force was nearly 30,000 short tons. That is equivalent to a nuclear bomb and would cause a major seismic event all over the world. Nine metric tons of special supergun propellant would be enough to launch a 1,323-pound, or 600-kilogram, or a 4,400-pound, 2,000-kilogram, rocket-assisted projectile over a 622-mile, 1,000-kilometer range. This weapon was never completed because Bull was assassinated and the first Gulf War began. So, that's it for this episode. If you have any favorite big guns, please let us know in the comments.